before we get started, let's chat real quick. So, you recently moved here uh, to Puerto Rico, right? Right, yeah. And how long ago did you move here? Uh, five months. Five months ago. And where were you before that? Uh, Chico, California. And where were you born and raised? Italy. Italy. And so you've, so you're not an American citizen, is that correct? I am both European and American. You have dual. Dual. Nice. Super cool. And what, when did you first discover Puerto Rico and what attracted you to this island? Yeah. Well, uh, um, all right. Uh, well, first of all, um, thank you for setting this up. You know, it's great. Um, and what, what drove me to Puerto Rico? Well, number one is uh, um, I love traveling. I love, you know, the ability to, like, move around the world. And um, another great thing that the Puerto Rican government, and it's, type of, it's kind of like a, um, a contradictory like, type of, uh, um, you know, legislative act, but um, there's Act 20 and Act 22, right, for those that are aware of it. And, and it actually allows digital companies to come to Puerto Rico and set up their business there and take advantage of certain tax breaks, right? So um, from a business perspective, that was one of the main reasons. And then outside of that, with my personal lifestyle, I love being away from the materialistic things that you, know, you get around like the US a lot. I wanted to go back to like, Latin culture, like you know, I'm I'm from Italy, and so I love like the warmth that people have, and you kind of lack that in the United States. And so I've noticed this in Puerto Rico that the people are so nice, and um, everybody's like very welcome, and it's been one of the best decisions of my life. So to to wrap it up, for tax benefits, and because I think it's an amazing island. Yeah, well, thank you, man. Um, so today you're going to be sharing, uh, I guess, some behind the scenes of of how you created your company and uh, some insights how other people could, could run a global company from this island or anywhere else in the world, right? And there's people who do this all over the world. There's people who do it in Indonesia and in Bali and in Hawaii and all these other islands. Um, so I'm, I'm super, super grateful that you chose our island, man. And, and thank you so much for, for sharing, sharing your insights. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Welcome everybody. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak to all of you. And today I want to talk about the great opportunity that we have with digital marketing, right? Um, I want to tell you a little story. It was uh, January 2nd, 20, uh, 2018. And I was in a London airport and uh, um, my business was not doing very well, right? So the, the British Airways told me that my flight was gonna be there and I was gonna, was gonna be able to come back to the United States. So I took the first flight, I went to London, and then supposedly there was this flight that was supposed to take me from London to San Jose. Well, that flight never existed, right? They sold me a ticket that was never there. And so I was stuck in the London airport for 17 hours. On top of that, what happened is that that very day, one client left and I started losing clients like throughout like the past probably like three weeks, I lost probably like 80% of my business. And so I was getting to a point where um, I had 80% of my business lost. I was strang like stranded at an international airport for the whole night. I couldn't get out of the airport. And uh, on top of that, I had a lawsuit that was waiting for me in California. Right, and I broke down. So I, I found myself crying in a, um, in a British airport. And uh, from there, my life changed completely around. You know, I built my business up from what it was. I, uh, I'm working with Kyle right there, my business partner. We started, you know, put our head down and try to figure out. And the reason that I tell this story is because there's so many times in our life that we think like there's something that is not gonna work, right? We feel like so many times that we're in these circumstances that are so against us, you know, even our loved ones, right? Because I don't know how many in this room are entrepreneurs, but a lot of our loved ones wanna protect us, right? And they see entrepreneurship as uh, something that is gonna hurt us because it is painful, right? So um, that, with that said, um, what I wanna focus on today is the opportunity that we all have with digital marketing and how we can serve others and serve ourselves. So there's a number right here. And this number is $400,000 a month. Um, I don't know if you, any of you guys can guess what it is. It's probably pretty difficult, but this is the numbers of businesses that are created every single month in the United States alone. 
So there is 400,000 business every single month created in the United States alone, right? So that, that creates kind of a big opportunity because a lot of these business, business owners are passionate about whatever they go into business for, right? If they're a farmer, they're passionate about farming. If they have a massage therapy, they're passionate about massage therapy. If they're a construction company, they're passionate about construction. Majority of them are not passionate about marketing, right? And so they build this business and then they don't know how to market it. They don't know like how to drive people in. And that's when we come in, right? We, uh, um, our younger generation has the opportunity to be living in uh, like a digital revolution, right? We have the opportunity to learn how to drive people to certain pages and help businesses grow. And I think there is a lot um, of power behind that. You know, like you can create jobs, make business owners happy about you know their own mission, and at the same time earn yourself an income and you know live life the way it should be lived on your own schedule, buying the things that you want to buy and being able to travel and spend time with your loved ones. So, four hundred thousand a month. You, I'm sure you can get one a month, right? It's a, it's a good amount, so I'm sure you can scrape a little bit. Um, so, next slide. Thank you. That's my girlfriend, by the way, Maddie. Yeah. Um, so, um, what, are, what are we? We are customer acquisition specialists because um, as biz business owners only care about one thing when they get in business. Who knows what that thing is? Profit, sales, right? That's what they want. And so when you create a digital marketing agency that is focused on branding, that it's focused on likes, that it's focused on anything else that doesn't directly correlate with a higher increase on revenue, you are misaligning yourself with the ultimate purpose that the business owner has. The business owner have wants more sales and you have to give them more sales. And if you create this type of relationship, then you're gonna have happy clients, you're gonna have a fulfilled life and you can go on with your mission. So, next slides, please. Okay, so the math is fairly simple. We said that there's 400,000 businesses being opened in the United States alone. That's not even considering the rest of the world and all in, uh, English and Spanish speaking countries. And all you have to get is five clients that pay you $1,000 a month for them to get more business, right? If I have my marketing agency and you bring me clients and these clients pay me like $3,000 a month, then I would be more than happy to cut you a thousand dollars a month check as long as that you know you keep doing the work. So at the end of the day, your goal is to figure out how can I bring in more than a thousand dollars a month with advertising for a certain business, do it for five business, and you're making five thousand dollars a month. And you have the ability to do this from whatever you like. You can do this from here. I can actually pull up my laptop and set up all the ads that I need to do. I actually don't set up the ads. My business partner takes care of all that backend stuff. Um, but it's simple. It's an opportunity that uh, a lot of time gets overlooked. And uh, um, we settle down for the nine to five, you know, the nine to five jobs, because it seems easier. You know, it's like, let's just get a nine to five and see, see where it takes us, you know, where I'm just gonna do it. Mom told me that I need to go to college and get a degree and work at a, at a, at a bank. Well, uh, um, sometimes, you know, the people that love us, um, are wrong, it just it's the way it is. So, um, if you um, have a mission in life that you want to, you know, have a, a life full of purpose and live it on your own terms, I highly recommend that um, you check out the information that I'm about to share, because I'm going to share with you exactly how I run my company, um, system, the systems that I have in place. I can't go too tactical because usually it takes eight weeks to set up something like this, but um, I'm going to be very strategic. I'm going to give you a, like a bird's eye view of how it works. And then if you guys want to um, set it up for yourself, you reach out to me and I help you out. Deal? Deal. All right. Let's do it. All right. So um, as Anthony said, uh, I was born in Italy, or I said it, I don't remember. Uh, I was born, I'm born in Italy. I'm 26 years old. I'm the founder of Blue Fox Media. The reason that it's called Blue Fox is because I have blue eyes and my middle name is Fox. So it's pretty simple. Uh, I have a, a passion about sales and business development. I love helping people and I love making money. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the machine. So guys, when we create a business, you're pretty much creating a machine. And that's something that I really wanna stress is that business needs to be predictable and efficient, right? Like you need to have a degree of predictability when you set up a business. Because if you don't, then you're pretty much locking yourself into a job, 
right? If you don't have the processes put in place to be effective and deliver the results that you promise your clients, you're just getting yourself a new job and that's not the reason we got in business. So the machine is divided into three main departments. Number one, it's sales, figuring out the inner systems to get clients. Number two is onboarding. How do we finish up with a meeting and start the process to get the client results, right? It's the bridge that connects the sales part to the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is where you actually deliver on your promise, right? You promise your client more uh, uh, clients and you have to do that or the client is not gonna stick around for long. All of that is regulated by internal systems of operation. So when you run a business, you gotta make sure that there are systems in place for every single activity so that somebody can come in a three-year-old can come in and literally run your business. Why? Because step A is this and you have a video on how to do it. Step B is this and you have a video on how to do it. Step and so like your business is programmed, right? That everything is done step by step. And so let's, let's break down this machine and you guys are gonna be the engineers, right? When we build a machine, we are not the wheels in the machine, we are the engineers. We make sure that the machines run smoothly and the way that we want it to be. Okay, next one. Okay, let's start with sales. The objective of sales is to get clients, right? And inside of sales, there's two simple systems inside of the digital, of a digital marketing agency. Um, these systems have to be predictable and effective. If your systems are not predictable, what does that mean? That means that if you do 100 cold calls with a certain script, you know that you're gonna get 12 meetings. If you do 12 meetings with a certain script, you know that you're gonna get three closes. Right, so you know that every time you do 12 cold calls with a certain prospect list, then you get, you get you know, 12 meetings and then you get three closes. So you have a degree of predictability and, eff and effectiveness inside of your model. So that the first part is figuring out how to get meetings with potential clients, right? So you're gonna have to figure out um, what is the best method for your industry, right? If you're reaching out to like a medical practitioner, um, cold call might be a little bit tough, right? Because you're going through layers of decision makers. You have to determine like, which person am I gonna talk to? The secretary that is gonna give me to the reception, which is gonna give me to the associate and everything. So that might be difficult. You might wanna try emails. You might wanna try like Facebook direct outreach or leveraging LinkedIn or Facebook groups, the Instagram, like there's a ton of methods. I don't wanna go too much in the details because this is something that you have to figure out personally. But that's the number one thing you have to figure out within your sales process, it's how you're gonna get meetings with clients, right? If you can't get meetings with clients, your machine is broken. Number two, when you get a meeting with, client, with a client, how are you gonna close the deal, right? So we got the meeting, we figured that out, now it's time to close the deal, right? And there's certain, you know, like, um, psychological ways that you can determine somebody to take action, right? And so you can read some sales book and figure out, you know, that there is a pattern, right? There is a pattern to make people want to, to work with you. And it's through a diagnostic. You see, a lot of salespeople go into a process in which they pitch, they pitch, they pitch, they pitch, and you get bored, right? You know that what, what they want. The consultant doesn't do that, and we don't do that, right? You need to be, a di you need to diagnose, right? The best salespeople are people that ask the right questions. If you have asked the right question, you determine if the person that you're about to work with is a good fit for you and you guys should do business and you guys are gonna come to the, this decision together or if it's not a good fit. And sometimes it's better not to work with people even though they pay you well because it might come at the detriment of your own health, your own relationship or your own business. If there's a gut feeling of not working with somebody, don't do it. And so how to turn meetings into closed deals? Ask the right questions, drive the person to the same conclusion that you wanted to drive to and then give them an offer. Simple as that. Next slide. Okay, the onboarding process. So we figured out how to, we're gonna get meetings with clients. We figured out how to close meeting with clients. Now a client signed the contract and it's ready to start working with us. This is the onboarding process, right? So in the onboarding process, what you're gonna do is get all the client's information. You're gonna get all the creative assets, all the videos that you need. You're gonna get all the logins, the password, the email list, Facebook access, everything, contact information, a schedule of communication, and all of that. Now, um, Maddie, are you able to pull out that form if you click on that? If, if it's not, it's fine. I just wanna give him an idea, okay. So, I, wanna, I just wanna show you guys how, how it's a Google form. Google form is free, right? So you start scrolling down, it's like welcome, put your email address, next. Maximum floats is the, um, one of our DBAs. 
Just put your email address. I'll I'll, I'll put you in our email list. <laughs> I got another lead. <laughs> okay, next. And it's a simple process. So you jump on a Zoom call and you start going through this form with your prospective clients. You ask them what's your company name, what is your name, your title, your role, what is your website URL, and keep scrolling down. We're gonna make this quick. Okay, what is preferred method of communication, right? Some people like to be emailed, some people like to be called, some people like to be text. Like you gotta figure out what is the best way to communicate with your client. The way you know ahead from the start that this person doesn't like to talk on the phone. Don't call him. Okay, next. Yeah. Hey, we'll let you go. Yeah. Okay, now we get into like a little bit more in depth, right? We start asking uh, what is the main way that you're bringing a new, because we're in the float therapy niche, for those of you that know float therapy, um, and you know what it is. For those of you that don't know what it is, it's pretty much a form of therapy where you lay in a tank of water, the water is saturated with 100 pounds of salt, 100 or 1,000? A thousand pounds of salt, so the, you're buoyant, right? You float effortlessly. And the room is completely dark, there is no sound, there is no light, and you're by yourself in the water that has the same temperature as your body. And so you lose the connection between when the water starts, when the body ends, the, body, the water starts, and you go into a deep meditation state. So this is the, the, the niche that we're working in, right? You can work with all kinds of niches. People need more customers, everybody does. So that's. Uh, that's the question that we ask. Then we ask, how big is your email list? How many active members do you have? What is your target audience? Blah, 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 blah. Go for it. Okay. Then all the logins, like I talked about. Okay, so I think I got my point across, right? It's a systematized approach to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, right? So even if I don't do it, I can have somebody in my team say, hey, go through this list with our, with our client and get the information. And so that's how you delegate your things, right? The point of having a business is reducing the amount of time that you do day-to-day -day operations and you do long-term projects, right? What can you do today that moves your business forward two, three, four, five, ten years from now, right? And that's why I'm in Puerto Rico because I believe this island is going to move my business forward a lot more than it would be in the United States. So, next one. Okay, fulfillment, right? So where, where are we now? We did the sales, we did the onboarding, we have all the contact information, it's time to deliver on the promise that we gave to our client, right? Because if you don't deliver with the promise, then um, you're not doing your job, right? You're not honoring your word, your word and uh, you're doing a disservice to everybody. You're doing a disservice to yourself because you use reputation, you're doing a disservice to your client because he paid you to do certain work. So you gotta make sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, so the objective here is to, de to deliver on the promise that you have with the client, which is more customers, right? So again, predictable and effective. You have to pr be predictable and effective in what you do because business without predictability. And Number one, you gotta figure out how do I get leads for clients? How a leads is qualified as a name, an email, and a phone number of a certain person, right? So you're gonna get the name, email, and phone number of a potential customer, and then you have somebody that's interested in the services that your client is providing, and then you figure out how do you, how do you convert that lead into an actual customer. You see, the problem with a lot of marketing agency is that they stop at step one. They say, hey, I got your leads, and you don't call your, le your leads, you suck, and I'm doing my job, and you're not. Well, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's, that doesn't end there. You know, us, as marketers, we have a responsibility to make sure that those leads convert into customers, or we're just doing half of our job. And so, once you collect the payment information, you have to follow up with the lead multiple times. And I actually, I'm gonna pull up a, a study right now. It's a study done by MIT, right? They, um, I think over 100,000 uh, calls, is that right? 100,000 calls that showed f the importance of following up with a certain lead within a certain amount of time, and the type of results that you're able to get. So, let's see that study. Click on it, this is actually pretty cool. Let's see, um, yeah, open it. I'm gonna put you in my many chat list, Carlos, so you'll get all my updates. <laughs> okay, so this is a messenger bot, so it's something simple like, um, let's see, um, if you get started, would that work? Click on get started, Maddie, at the bottom. Yep, 
there you go, boom. I ask you, hey, do you want to get more conversions for your customers? Yeah, I do. Click MIT study. Click that button that says MIT study. All right, and that's how I capture leads for people that want to be helped, right? With a digital marketing agency. I put him in a list, now he's in my manager list, and uh, um, we're gonna begin a, a relationship process. Okay, so click on there, MITinsidesales.com, best practices for lead response management. Thank you very much. Are you cool if you save this? Of course. Okay, good. All right. So, it's gonna load here. Be patient with me, guys. Okay, so this is the lead response management study. This is done by MIT, okay? It's a um, Harvard Business Review, and it's been done over three years of data, 15,000 unique leads, and over 100,000 call attempts. Right? So, what are the best day to make contact with a lead? Wednesday and Thursday. This is 100,000 points of data, okay? So it's statistically significant. What are the best times to make contact with a lead? Between 8 a.m. and 8.30, and between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. So you know exactly what time should I be contacting my lead to get the results that I want. Then go down, response time. It's interesting to see but because of the short attention span that we have as humans now with our Instagrams and Facebook and everything and the, we get bombarded with information, that a lot of people submit information to be interested in something and they forget that they're interested within five minutes. Within five minutes. Like, I'm not kidding. Right here. This is five minutes. The interest goes down almost completely. Right, so you have to contact the lead within five minutes, and how many times? The persistence, you have to contact the lead six times within 24 hours to ensure that that lead actually comes into the business. Right, so there's a level of, of persistence behind turning a lead into a customer. And so um, the reason that I'm showing this to you guys is to give you some awareness on the of the type of work that we do and what do we do to ensure that we deliver results for our clients. Right? It's data driven. You know, we do very little guessing. Because guessing doesn't build businesses, right? It's like following the numbers that does. So that's uh, um, that's some data points for you guys. If you want this information, just reach out to me. I'll I'll send it over or you can just Google MIT lead response study and you can get it. It's super simple. All right, next one. Okay, and on top of that, there's all the systems of operation, right? So you saw the big department, sales, onboarding, and fulfillment. Now you have to have the system overall arching the whole entire operations, right? So there's a handful of systems that you're gonna need to scale, right? You can actually get to $5,000 a month by yourself. You don't need to do like, my, any, like you don't need a team to uh, achieve that. However, if you wanna scale beyond that, it's actually like good to scale beyond that. Um, if that's your goal. And so you gotta have a hiring process, right? So this is how I hire. There's three things that I look for. Number one is attention to details. And so how do I test attention to details? I give you an assignment to do, and I give you very clear instruction. And say, say let's, let's make an example. I go on Upwork. I wanna hire um, somebody that does a certain task. I, I, all of these hundred people, I give them all the same assignment. Follow the instruction on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Out of those, 80% don't follow the instructions. Perfect, you don't have attention to details. That's good, save us both time. Okay, so we got 20 left. The second thing that I, wanna, that I look for when I hire somebody is time management and attention to deadlines. Because in, in our world with clients, speed is everything, right? We gotta make sure that the project gets done on time. And so out of those 20 people, I tell everybody, look, get this project done by this time, and I don't care about it being perfect. I want it done. If it's imperfect, that's fine, but if it's not done in time, that's not good. And so if it, out of those 20 people, five will get it done in time. And out of those five people, I go into the third level, which is a personality test. I wanna make sure that these people can work with me because if they can't work with me and I can work with them because you know we don't like each other, then we're doing each other a disservice working together. And so after that, I started with 100, got down to 80, got down to 20, got down to what, three, five, and then I interview five people. So I don't spend my time interviewing 100 people. Who's got that time? 
I automatically scan through it, through exercises of what I want them to do, and then I only talk with the people that are qualified to do what I want them to do, and, they, and that I like. So that's the hiring process, give you a, a little tangent right there. And then team communication, we use Slack, um, client communication, you know, you gotta, like we talk about in the onboarding form, you gotta figure out how often you wanna talk with your clients. And then the execution of the ads, create processes when you create the ads. What do you do? You create a campaign, an ad set, all your targeting, you figure out the copy, the copywriting that you're gonna use, and all the creative, creative assets that you're gonna use. So you wanna create a plug and play model, right? So ideally, you wanna specialize into one niche, which is say you work for construction companies. You wanna use the same ad across all of your clients because that's how you scale. Right? You don't want to reinvent the wheel every single time. Just re rinse and repeat. Do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And then you keep scaling. And then you're going to have a scaling problem. And you solve that. And then you got to know how to acquire clients. And acquiring clients and even the sales process has to be, everything needs to be predictable. Right? So you use the same scripts every single time. You use the same structure to run a meeting. You use uh, everything the same every single time. Don't alter it. Only alter it if you think that it's going to increase the results. So next one. All right, so guys, if you want to follow me and get in contact with me, this is my Instagram, Alex Fox Griejo. Um, I respond to the, my DMs like once, like probably for, for it takes me probably 48 hours to respond to the DMs, um, but I'm there, I'm active, and you can follow my story. So simple as that. Okay. So what's next? Q and A, all right, this is my favorite part of the presentation. So if you guys have any questions, ask me any questions. If you don't have any questions, that's fine too. Do you, what industries do you work with? Only float tanks or? Right, so uh, inside of our, we have two companies. One is for float tanks and one is for people that want to start this model. So we, we are consultant for marketing agencies as well. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure, brother. Yeah. Most clients don't even know that I own the company. <laughs> yeah, right? Because that's what you want to have, right? You don't want them like, to reach out to you. It's like, dude, the systems are in place. My business partner does a phenomenal job managing the clients. We have a great team. I don't need to talk to the clients. And so what happens is that because we're so niched that we use the same ad over and over again, we work with businesses in Australia, in a lot of states in the United States, and we run everything out of Puerto Rico. So yeah, no, there is no client interaction in person unless you know we start traveling and we get closer. There is one or no? Yeah, there is one tank, right? There is one tank in a house, right? I no, I don't know. We haven't checked it out, but uh, I think I, if I don't think there is one like like a established business for float tank in Puerto Rico. Definitely is, yeah. And you know, Steph Curry does it, like high performers does it, Tony Robbins does it. So, I mean, try it out. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. George. Question. Uh, you're, you're getting your customers, you have your clients. Are you selling them the final lead? You know, like you said, your job's not done, you're, you're going all the way down. Is, is that part of automated to some upward guy, or are you the guy that's doing the six follow up? Uh, making sure that five-minute lead is curated into the, into the pile where you're, it's going to be sellable. Right. So I guess my, my final question is, are they paying you a, a flat rate to do the marketing, or are they saying, hey, now I have a lead, you're going to pay me $75 because I got a real person who really signed up or who took your service? Yeah, no, the, right. We, we give them a limited amount of leads for $1,000 a month. The reason being is that I want... Unlimited? unlimited, okay. as many as they want. The number, the reason being is I want to align myself with the purpose of the business owner, 
right? If I start selling him leads, and it caps out every month, say every month I can only get X amount of leads, then I I'm actually have an incentive of like holding back to the leads for the next month, those leads goes cold, and the quality of my work goes down. So uh, to me it's important to put in a pricing system that aligns your objective with the one of the business owner. So um, for that reason, yeah, we, we get the leads and then we actually train our clients to follow that system. So we say, look, we're gonna get you all these leads, you have to contact them six times in 24 hours. You have to contact them within five minutes. You have to text, call. If they don't answer, double dial, leave a voicemail, and do that twice uh, after the leads come in. And that's yeah, that's how we get the results that we're getting. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. so your company doesn't call because of uh, leads. No. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Right, I think that's, that's a great question and that happens throughout the sales process, right? In the sales process, as a consultant, it's your job to diagnose the situation. Um, and so you diagnose and you ask the right question. You ask, hey, do you, do you have the time available to do this? Do you have the resources to be able to follow up like this? And if they say no, don't work with them. It's not worth it, you know? You're doing, we're doing each other a disservice. So yeah, we, we ensure in the sales process that those, that client is a good fit. And if it is a good fit, then it's very likely that we're gonna work together. Can you provide an example um, when you're going to be someone uh, of a task that you need to? Right, so give me a task. He's asking you for a task. So like, what would we assign to someone? Oh, okay, so say somebody wants to, we want to hire somebody to be an advertiser, right? We want somebody to run ads for us. The number one thing is that I want them to follow instructions. So I will tell them, A, write a copy, B, follow the structure for your copywriting, introduction, problem solution, call to action, um, create a small 30 seconds selfie style video, and say the script in that video, and then after that, create a good targeting for the ad. So screenshot your targeting, and then send, send it over to me. And so I know that they're gonna need to follow those precise instructions, right? And even if they're not perfect, like I said, like. No, the instructions, sorry, need to be perfect because they need to follow the instructions. Uh, but then on the second step, it's like, okay, now you did it, get this ad up in the next 24 hours, right? Now that you did the instruction number one, you, you, did, you did everything perfect, now can you stick to my time schedule? And if they stick to the time schedule, perfect, we go into an actual personality interview. If they are one minute late, they're not getting interviewed. So, yeah. Answer your question? Yes. <laughs> okay, good, man. Go for it. How this partnership, you know, has been going so great. Tell about your story of a company. We want to know. Oh, okay. Abs absolutely. Okay, so um, I um, I came from Italy here to the United in, uh, um, in California, and I started my first company was uh, called Bidwell Investments. And I would collect funds and I would trade futures. Futures are leveraged contracts for uh, um, wealthy clients. Um, I'm, just so you know, I have not taken a penny from my family throughout this whole, I'm not, I was not born rich. I uh, was raised by my grandparents. I was digging potatoes out of the ground when I was like three years old, so I got my hand dirty. And that I'm actually very grateful that I did that because my grandparents taught me like real work ethic, right? Like this stuff takes time and you have to put in the work. So yeah, I got to that point and then I started a company. I did it for three years and I made $3,000 in three years. So uh, I actually didn't make a $3,000, I lost money, right? Because all the expenses and everything. And then once it got to that point, uh, school ended, and uh, there is no way I'm gonna get hired by somebody. Like it's just not happening. Uh, just because of the way I run interviews, I set up my own frame, and people want employees, and I don't think I'm a good employee. So um, I wouldn't get a job, and I had to figure out, okay, I'm gonna do it on my own. I read a book, which is Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. And uh, that book like inspired me. It's like, dude, there is a great opportunity in the market. 
you know, there is this wave of technology, there is uh, all the money is uh, people that don't know and understand technology, there is a gap to be filled. And so I started the agency, and uh, after that, Ty Lopez came out with the course, I purchased the course, and then um, that's when Kyle purchased the course too, and we got together, right? So the company, um, we ran it together, and uh, um, I was uh, focused on the sales side while he was going to school. Um, we were getting clients together. He got a couple of clients. I was always selling and hustling out there. And I built a company, you know, like pretty, like, probably, like in eight months, we got to like $23,000 a month, right? And I had no experience. And it's kind of scary because when you build something that big and you have no experience, it's going to collapse. And in fact, that's what happened. It collapsed. Um, that's when I lost all the clients, right? Because I didn't know the fulfillment side. And so I got to a point where I, created a funnel. I don't know if you guys know what a funnel is, but it's like where traffic comes in and converts into leads for a specific kind of client. And then one of my friends was like, screw that client, build the same funnel for my company and I'll give you a percentage of it. And I did, and the next thing that I knew, and this is what happened, I built it, and uh, um, I flew back to Italy, right, to see my family, and the moment that I set my feet in bed, I open my email and there is a letter for a lawyer telling that I'm sued, right? That I'm sued because I took intellectual property, that he said it's his even though I've built it, but you know, I was in the wrong. I was for sure in the wrong. Um, so I'll, I'll, pay for the, I'll pay for those consequences. And, but that was, you know, that was a stressful time. That's when I was losing all the clients. And then after that, um, Kyle and I started focusing on, the, on a specific niche, systematized everything, onboarded. We work with uh, um, the largest franchise in the United States for float therapy. So those are, those are, that's our client, yeah. And th they have 22 locations. We, we manage all of them, right? 21. There's one we still got to convince, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, so we, we manage those location, And now um, everything is so systematized. Kyle did a phenomenal job that I find myself with a lot of time on my hand, right? And so what am I gonna do with this time? My purpose now is to help other entrepreneurs, like all of you guys in this room, achieve the same system for yourself. We've tested it, we've proven it, we've optimized it, and now I literally spend probably like 12 to 13 hours a day on the phone doing calls, like scheduling meetings, and making sure that I can help as many entrepreneurs as possible implement the same model. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. I'm, I love Puerto Rico. <laughs>